shofar. And in the end, it talks about what happens on Shabbat when we don't sound the shofar on Shabbat. It explains spiritually how tremendously important shofar is. And what happens when we don't sound it on Shabbat, when it falls on Shabbat, we don't sound the shofar. What, what, do, we, what do we do to, to make that up? So here we go. Tiko b'chodesh shofar b'say to the Shmaya with the help of God. With the help of God, the second day of Rosh Hashanah, Tov Shin Mem Zion, which means 1987. Hanacha. Hanacha means that the Rebbe didn't go over this necessarily. He didn't go over the mimer. He didn't make notes on it in any case. Tiku b'chodesh shofar b'chesed liyum chagenu. Sound in the month the shofar. Bechesa and a special day, Liyom Chagenu, for the day of our rejoicing. There are different explanations of almost all these words. <clears throat> but interestingly enough, in the Torah itself, it doesn't say <coughs> that you should sound the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. It says, Yom Tuluwa Yelcha. It says it will be a day of trumpet sounding. And the place where it really says, says sort of clearly that you sound on Rosh Hashanah, the shofar, is in Psalms. In Psalms, excuse me, I got this thing caught up in there. There we go. In the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, it says, Tiku b'chod shofar, Psalm 81. Sound on the month, Chodesh, shofar. And of course, the only holiday in Judaism that is on the first day of the month. That's when the Chodesh is, means the new, the new month. The only holiday is Rosh Hashanah. All the other holidays are <clears throat> or in the middle of the month or like each, uh, Shavuot is on the sixth day of the month, but none of them are on the first day of the month. The only one's the first day of the month is Rosh Hashanah. So the Chodesh is Rosh Hashanah. Tiku means sound, shofar. Sound the shofar. The word Bechesa means a lot of things. Bechesa means in this sense, on the holiday, special day. Ches is the special day. Li Yom Chagenu, for the day of our rejoicing. Oh, let's see what it means. Mobar Bazet, it's explained in this, Kavad Kedushim Morichami Admor, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Nasi Dereinu, he's the leader of our generation. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. He explains in a mimer which he said, by the same name, Tiku B'chodesh, Tafshin Zion, which is 1947. 40 years earlier. The Rebbe is saying this in 87, and the previous Rebbe said it in 47. La'achre, 40 years earlier. The Achre Arbaim Shana says, after 40 years, Ka'enish Adaita La Rebbe. Remember, that was right in the end of last week's Torah reading. The last week's Torah reading, it said that you have not come to really be whatever is on my, my people until this day. It says after 40, after Jews were, wandered 40 years in the desert, then it says that they really started understanding what Moshe meant. So it says a person takes 40 years for a person to really reach the level of his teacher. And we're talking about a teacher that teaches about life. We're talking really about a Torah teacher. A Torah teacher that really embodies everything that he teaches, and he wants to bring that over to you, as it takes really 40 years just to, under, to <clears throat> really sort of realize that, internalize. In any case, the previous Rebbe said a mimer 40 years before this one, and it talks about the same subject, and he points out, the Omer is out, the rabbi say, on the Pasuk, on the sentence, the rabbi say in the Gemur in Rosh Hashanah. 
Eizachag, which holiday is it? Shachodesh, that the month, the, the moon, mitchasab or b'chasab means is covered. Also, it means to be covered. Which is the month that the moon is covered in? Havi Omer, I would say, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah begins right at the beginning of the month. So right before that, the moon was totally covered, right? In Judaism, the months go according to the moon and also according to the sun. Both of them together, they are, they're synchronized. So it comes out according to the sun, that for instance, the holiday of Nisan, of, of, of Pesach, always falls out in spring. But on the other hand, all of the first days of the month, not like the American calendar, the American calendar pays no attention whatsoever to the months, to the moon. <clears throat> in Judaism, the first day of the month is always a sliver of the moon. Right before that is no moon. Which is the month that the moon is covered? Rosh Hashanah. The Bechese, that what it says, Bechese, this is Kas Hey. Kas Hey means to be covered over the letter Hey of God's name. The hey, that the hey of God's name, Kai, refers to the sphere of Malchut, of God's kingship. What does this mean? God creates the world. We say that God is the king of the universe. We're supposed to say it a hundred times every day. We're supposed to make a hundred blessings every day. That God is the king of the universe. Melech Olam. That the God is the king of the universe doesn't only mean that God is the king like a regular physical king. He can do what he wants, even though that's true. But it means that God creates the world all the time. Because malchut is also a Kabbalistic term. And it refers for God, to God's creative power. Malchut. To create something that seems to be separate from him. That's God's kingship. <clears throat> it says, cause the hey, the letter hey, that's represented by the last of the four letters of God's name. Yud is the first letter of God's name. Then there's He and there's Vav. And then there's the last letter of God's name is another He. And this, God's name, this sort of also paints a picture of what God's personality is like. And the last of them is God's, the lowest, is God's creative power. This refers to the Sumer of Malchut. And on Rosh Hashanah, it's Kas, it's covered. Kas this is Kisui, it is covered over. Rosh Hashanah is called Kese, the Chese, Lifi, because Sheba Rosh Hashanah and Rosh Hashanah, Svira Tamalchut, this God's creative power, is covered. Umit Alemet, and hidden. The Helem Atzmi, in an essential way. On Rosh Hashanah, God decides how he's going to create the next world like an inventory and it's usually stores when they take inventory they close closed for inventory <clears throat> so the store closes up and it still is there maybe they have someone at the door telling people what to do maybe for emergency cases they have one worker there but the store is closed for inventory that's what God does in Rosh Hashanah Rosh Hashanah because God is creating the world he's creating the world constantly but he's still, every year, he closes it for inventory. It's only the outside. He leaves a cup, only the, I'm sorry, the inside. The inside. He's, he, the, the world is still going. You see the sun comes up and the moon, right? Things are, are still the way they're supposed to be. Nature, the wind blows, gravity, law of gravity still applies. What's going on? You can't see. So, well, little do people know, but there's a king of the universe. There's a king of the universe. The universe runs okay. And there's a king of the universe. And the king of the universe cares very much about what people do. If there's any unified field theory that you can use to unite all branches of science and mathematics and, and psychiatry and psychology and sociology, it's the Jews and God. What the Jews do, that determines the whole welfare of the world. Strange, sounds strange, but that's the way it is. God created, it's even something even stranger. When God created the world, it didn't depend on the Jews. It depended on one person. One person. 
all the animals and the sun and the moon and the stars and the plants, it all depends on Adam. That's the secret of the world, that the world depends on people doing what God wants. And when Adam failed, so it had to wait about 2,000 years until there came along Abraham. And Abraham began fixing this up. And since then, there's been all sorts of destructions and weird things, but that's yeah, idolatry. And, uh, but that's the whole secret of the world. The secret of the world is the Jews. That's the idea of the base of Megdash. And it's also a very important point that this world is very, very important to God. God didn't create the world as just like a... Uh, you know, this maze that we have to get through or some sort of a some sort of a playground that God just sort of watches it, you know, like a, t a boxing match or something. Even though it has that aspect to it also. Yes, it does. But that's, that's to put it very, very simply and superficially. The world is very important to God. Here is where God wants to be revealed. Here is where God creates everyone. He gives everybody life. So there's this interrelationship between the world and God, and God and the world. And that's Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the day that God makes the judgment. How did it work last year? Did anybody really get the point of this world or not? Serving God or not? Did, did they get it? Did the Jews get it? So that's the, that's what means the judgment day. God judges how the world is going to be next year. Rosh Hashanah. This is, that's what's called making God a king. Svirat HaMalchut. That's God's... And it, on Rosh Hashanah, it's sort of covered. On Rosh Hashanah, God is creating the world all the time from His power of Malchut, kingship. On Rosh Hashanah, He sort of closes for inventory. On the Rosh Hashanah, Svirat HaMalchut, this aspect of God's kingship, Mithasit is covered in mitalemet and hidden. The helam atzmi, an, an essential concealment. In other words, God on Rosh Hashanah, He creates the world from the only the most external external forces, which most people they don't can't tell the difference anyway. That the, the people live a very external life, very superficial. Maybe we can add on. That's the holiday, the Chodesh Mechase, but this is the holiday that the month is hidden in it. It means the Chodesh is the moon. Chodesh is referring to the moon. And this, the moon, is also Sfirat HaMalchut. The moon is also considered, the sun is the giver. Sometimes that's called Tiferet, or Chesed. That's the upper Sfirat, and Malchut receives. That's the moon. The moon only receives, but on the other hand, it, it illuminates the darkness. And therefore, Hine, Ikra, Bodhis, Rosh Hashanah, the main service of Rosh Hashanah is to build up this aspect of Malchut. That the moon should shine fully. It says before Adam sinned, the sun and the moon, even, it says even before the fourth day, the sun and the moon were supposed to be equal. And we want it to be again, because the wor wor the moon represents this world receiving. And God wants his essence to be revealed here in the world. That's what it was a little bit in the Holy Temple. So on Rosh Hashanah, the moon is empty. And it signifies that we have to build it up. That's the whole thing we're doing on Rosh Hashanah. We're trying to convince God that, listen, God, <clears throat> I don't know what was a last year, but this year the coming is going to be totally different. Let's forget about what it was here last year. Let's, let's not even think about that. On Rosh Hashanah, you're not supposed to mention sins. That you do on Yom Kippur. On Rosh Hashanah, you don't mention sins. All you say on Rosh Hashanah is, listen, God, let's not think about last year. Let's not think about what was. What was. Give us a chance. Give me another chance. We want to build your kingship. We want to show you that we are loyal servants. And this is what we were preparing for the whole month of Elul. Like the rabbis say, Omer Lefanai Melchiot, you should say in front of me sentences of kingship. This is talking about the Musaf prayer of Rosh Hashanah. The Musaf prayer of Rosh Hashanah, it has in it 30 
sort of blessings in the middle. 30 blessings, well, just one big blessing really, but there's 30 statements, sentences that are brought from the Torah. 10 sentences to prove that God is a king. 10 sentences where God says he will remember. And 10 sentences that God says he listens to the shofar. And we bring these sentences from the Torah to prove to God. God, you said it yourself in the Torah that you're going to be a king. You said that you're going to remember us. You said you're going to listen to the shofar. That's the prayer of, of the Musaf prayer of Rosh Hashanah. Right? There are in the Musaf, in the Musaf prayer of Rosh Hashanah, I'm sorry, I, I, I sort of um, misled. I'm, it's, not, it's not so. It's not one big blessing. It's three separate blessings. There's one blessing that God is a king, one blessing that God is uh, listens, to the, uh, remembers us, and one blessing that God listens to the shofar. Ten sentences proving God is a king. That's one blessing. Another blessing is that God listens to the shofar. Another blessing is that God remembers us. But the one we're dealing with here is Malchut. In the end, they'll talk about shofarot. In the end. That's why it says, say in front of me, Malchiot, say in front of me sentences that I'm a king in order that I will be a king over you. In order to draw down this kingship is by means of sounding the shofar. Like it says, Tiku Bechot shofar. So the shofar is what really makes our work have an effect. Puts on the final touches. It's action. <clears throat> We're saying, God, we promise we'll be your servants. God, promise we will remember you. Please remember us. We'll do anything we can to make the world a better place. Anything. And then we sound the shofar to show we mean business. So that's why the shofar is the is the, the key to the whole thing. It's the key that locks that that unlocks the door attaches us to Hashem in a real way. Our essence to God's essence. Hine, behold, you do a diuk, it is known. Hine, behold, you do a diuk, it's known, the teaching of Moreno, Abel Shem Tov, in the book called Keter Shem Tov, in the sentence, the Havle Lamemer, the sentence seems to be grammatically incorrect. King David. It must be that King David is trying to get something across to us because the grammar doesn't exactly work. It should say Tiku Shofar Bechodesh. You should sound the Shofar in the month. What does it say? You should sound in the month the Shofar. Right? Grammatically it doesn't work that way. Hebrew doesn't work that way. Tiku shofar b'chodesh. You should sound a shofar in the month on Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't say you should sound on Rosh Hashanah a shofar. Good. I mean, poetically, it works out. Poetically, you can do anything. But we're talking about grammatically. Normal grammar is tiku shofar b'chodesh. Sound on a shofar on the month. Well, Pirush Vizel, the Baal Shem Tov said, if so, why does it say tiku b'chodesh? The Baal Shem Tov explains. Adam, a person should see to it. Constantly, she, yeah, that he should be Bechodesh. Renewal. Tiku Bechodesh Shofar. Tiku sound on the month, but this word month means to be renewed. Right? Like we said, the new moon. Okay, what does the word tiku mean? Let's see. The Baal Shem Tov says, <clears throat> a person should always renew everything he does. The good things he does. Shalo kavua. His good deeds that he does <clears throat> should not be that he does them by rote. By rote. There used to be, I, I worked for a while, not a long time, but I worked in a, in a factory. I lived in Detroit, so in, in summer there wasn't what to do. So I went to work in a factory, the Chrysler Ford, Chrysler Automobile Factory. And 
the job that they give you, you have to do the same thing every day. The whole day. You do the same thing. That's what you do. Right? You put a bolt on, you move a, a side of a car over, you bring a, you know, something from over here over to there. You do the same thing all the time. You know, in the beginning, maybe you're thinking, okay, it's a new job, you know, I'm going to get paid good. <clears throat> and then after that, you think to yourself, uh, uh, listen, at least I'm going to get paid good, you know, the, the pay is good. And then after a while, you just don't think. You just go and you just do it. This could be the same thing with all good deeds that you do. In the beginning, you do it, you're sort of excited, but then afterwards, you just don't think about it. Uh, that's sort of a, 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 one of the benefits of having a job like that, that you don't have to think. You know, you just sort of... Kamocho kavua. Yesh the parish So you shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that. It should be tiko b'chodesh. Everything should be brand new. Let's, we haven't finished yet. Yesh the parish, we can explain like this. We can explain like this. In Kiev and Shepasuk says, since this sentence that King David said in Psalm 81, is referring to Be'inyan Ikri Be'klali. <clears throat> because this sentence the King David said over here, Tiku Be'chode Shofar, is talking about something that's very important and very, very general, foundational in Judaism, namely Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, very important Jewish holiday, maybe the most important Jewish holiday. The man was created. And even more, it's the day that we make God a king. This is like the source of all of the hundred blessings we make every day. Melech Olam, Melech Olam, Melech Olam. We make God a king a hundred times every day. You're supposed to say a hundred blessings every day. Where do we get the power to do this? From Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, we make God a king. Melech. So this is very important, this sentence. It's talking about making God a king. Lefichach, therefore, Yishbo Horah, therefore, it has another teaching, but very foundational. And very general, ba'avoda kolalit in the service of God for every single Jew. <clears throat> Namely, what shetzurich liot avoda? You have to be serve God, but often in a way of, often in a way of chidush. Brand new. Shebechol pam bechol rega that every time, every moment, bechol davar v'davar everything you do. Yasu, it should be done. Come on, Dabr Chadash, like it's brand new. <clears throat> That's one of the things we do. You wake up in the morning, you say, Mode'ani. I hope everybody does it, <clears throat> but it's never too late. First thing you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to say, Mode'ani lefanecha, Melechai v'kayom she'achazar tabi nishmosi v'chemla, Rabba emunasam. Supposed to say that in the morning. If you don't say it, look in the sitter, and you should know what it means. But essentially, you're giving thanks to God. You're giving thanks to God. Thank you, God, that I'm awake. Well, really, every single moment, you should be thankful to God that you're awake. Every single moment. Every single moment is a miracle. Let's just talk about just simple, ordinary. I mean, there's people walk down the street and they die. People go to sleep. They, they don't wake up. Right? All of a sudden, a person gets hit by a car or gets hit by a, whatever it is, a, a, meteor, a meteorite, uh, has a heart attack, has this. So every, every second, I mean, this is what I'm seeing this a very, how do you say, crass way. But the fact of the matter is, it's a big miracle that we're alive every second. And not only we're alive, we have ears. I mean, you must have ears. You can hear me talking. You know, and probably you have eyes. See, these are amazing miracles that we have. We can never take any of this for granted. And the biggest miracle of all is that we can serve God. <clears throat> So it should be that everything we do and everything we see should be like new all the time. Should be like new all the time. Of course, we're not saying like totally new, you know, that you have no mother and no father. These are not these Eastern religions. You know, you forget your mother, you have no mother, you're being created right now, you have no past, you have no bank account, you have no wife, you have no children, you have nothing whatsoever. All you have is what? Is yourself. That's, that's super duper egotism. That's, that's really, you know, really concentrated egotism. We're not talking about that. We're talking about that a person has to be happy for everything that he has and everything that he does <clears throat> and everything he is. The present includes in it the past and the future as well. It's all miracles. 
So therefore, a person should be always happy with everything he does, constantly. And this we can learn from Rosh Hashanah, that God is renewing the world. It's not just happening <clears throat> by accident or by nature. Nature itself is a miracle. But we can even add more <clears throat> that this is what it says, Tiku Bechodesh. Tiku means strong. Chozek Betokif. Sheyit Katatzma, that he inserts himself. Like it says that they were putting a, a pegs in the ground to hold on to a tent. It says Yitka. They would insert it with power, right? To, to, to make it stick in. Yitka means that a person should make, be powerful, bechozek, betokif, and be very assertive, hach gadol, that it can be, belishum shinuyim ba'avodaso, without any changes in your service of Hashem. On one end, he's saying that everything is brand new, but on the other end, he's saying that you should never change. That's exactly what you should never change. You should never change this outlook and the appreciation that you have for Hashem and your thanks for Hashem, no matter what, whether it's good, whether it's, God forbid, the opposite. <clears throat> a person should always be grateful, thankful. Every single, every instant is a new opportunity to serve Hashem in a different way. Therefore, it says, Tiku should be powerful, bechodesh, that things should be brand new all the time. That's what the Baal Shem Tov says. Until he inserts himself in an internal, eternal way. Right? God is sending me life all the time. Is, this, is it the same life every single second? In a way, yeah. I mean, it's me. You know, I'm, I know who I am. I, this is still me. You know, my shoes still fit and my hat still fits. It must be the same me. And, you know, people recognize me. I re, it's the same memory. So it's the same me. It's a big miracle. What should be constant is our appreciation to Hashem. And the fact that Hashem wants us to use everything in the world to serve Him. And we can do it. That we should be tremendously, that should be chodesh, should be a big novelty to us. So that's what it means. Tiku, it should be very powerful, bachodesh, this feeling that you have that everything is brand new all the time. <clears throat> by means of this, call will be something new. By means of this, then everything that you do will always be brand new. this, we can explain the connection to what it said before this in the Torah of Baal Shem Tov over there. There's a book called Keter Shem Tov. And it says, what is a miracle? <clears throat> the Baal Shem Tov explains before he makes the statement that everything has to be brand new, <clears throat> you have to constantly renew your connection to the Creator, Creator. <clears throat> As he explained before this, what is the idea of a miracle? What is a miracle? A miracle is when something happens the first time. First time. When it happens the second time, then it's nikra in nature. It's called nature called nature. You ever see they have these videos of people that they can see for the first time? Ever see that? Children that they hear for the first time? I think the ones maybe they can hear for the first time is more impressive because they don't have to do that much. They just put on this little thing and they just turn up the... <clears throat> but they show the person that he, the, the children, they hear the first time I see it. Every time I see it, I cry. <laughs> I can't. What can I tell you? <clears throat> I mean, he is, he is, sound is such a very important thing. Sound is such a very important thing to hear, and especially music. They and they see children, they hear their mother's voice for the first time. They hear music, they hear a sound. They said, you see that his eyes just open up. They can't open up wide enough. He's just startled. You know, he's just startled the first time. But the second time, he's not so startled anymore. And the third time, it's regular. And now you're sitting and you're listening. Ah, you can listen, big deal. So we're hearing, we can see. Whenever something happens the first time, it's a miracle. The second time after that, it's called nature. But really, because God is creating the world brand new every moment. So everything is a miracle. The problem is with us, right? If we're just willing to, to accept it, to flow with it. We're also being created every moment. 
We can, I mean, as soon as you think it's not, then you sort of want to become God. You understand? You figure, you know, I'm the creator, and everything gets sort of boring, you know? <laughs> if God is the creator, then everything is really interesting. We can attach this to what it says, the Baal Shem Tov. She called over Olam that everything a person says in the Ola and the world is nischadish bekal rega is being renewed every moment. So every moment is like a Rosh Hashanah. Umash and Teva, and that which we call the world nature, and there's even laws of nature and there's predictable laws of nature that it return re, returns on itself, right? Laws of gravity, laws of 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 of, of movement. <clears throat> All these laws of, of Newton's laws, rock mishum she because we get used to it. So because things are not seemingly not being created the first time, so we get used to it, which that's to be expected. That's the way God created us. But if you and 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 you're supposed to, you you supposed what everything is supposed to be brand new. You know, you, you don't remember who your house is or where your car is. You know, everybody's supposed to have, you know, uh, amnesia. You're just living in a brand new world. No, like I said before, of course not. You're supposed to use your memory and you're supposed to be intelligent. You're supposed to, you're supposed to be a doctor and a lawyer and a mathematician and a scientist and all these things. <clears throat> but you're just supposed to realize that it's all amazing gifts. All your day is bonus, but if you think into this, Masha <clears throat> Be'emet, that in fact, everything is brand new, right? Which then makes it even more of a miracle. If you say everything, like I remember they used to be in the 60s, there was the hippies, right? <laughs> there was the hippies. I, I was not really part of this whole business, you know, even though I was, you know, I always took it with a grain of salt. I could really never sort of get into the whole thing. But I did go out to California for a while. And there was a pretty wild scene over there, you know. I was pretty wild. But I was always sort of very suspicious of the whole thing. You know, I just, <laughs> so there the whole thing is, is, you know, they have no possessions and you have no, I think they're trying to do it now in California. I think they're always trying to do it in California. You have no possessions and nobody owns anything and everyone's free and we just love each other. And they just, there's no boundaries and there's no this. Okay, in the end, what happened was it's just descended into total chaos. You know, just in the, into total chaos. The whole thing lasted for a couple of years. <clears throat> but nevertheless, there is a very important point to that. And the point, important point is, is that, you know, to see the world is brand new all the time when you don't have any possessions and you don't have any home, that's not that hard. That's not that hard because you have nothing, you know, you're just flying life is but a dream. But to have possessions and to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, to be a whatever, a teacher, to be a policeman, to be whatever you are, and to use all of your powers in order to the best ability. And if you're a businessman, you know, to not to lie and to provide the, the, and still to see that all of this, being a doctor and a lawyer and using your intelligence and your mind and, your, and all these things that happen, that is all being created by God. That's an amazing miracle. That's the real miracle. That's the message of the Jews to the world. Harizen noten koach, when you think about this, that's the power of Rosh Hashanah. The power of Rosh Hashanah that's in every moment. This gives power to everything that you do <clears throat> in serving God, that it'll be an open shell davar chadash mamash. It'll be brand new. And not only that, you'll be able to see some good in everything. Right? Once somebody called me up and he said, you know, come on, I got I got trained as a as a what is it, an engineer or something, and I can't find any work, and I'm working in a hardware store, and I'm just miserable over here, and I'm making my wife miserable. And, you know, what am I supposed to do? So I said to him, listen, you know, you're a religious Jew. Yeah, I'm a religious Jew. This is what I get. Come on, you know. So I said, listen, you know, in a hardware store, there's some good things in a hardware store. Well, what do you think? I said, listen, first of all, where you are is where God wants you to be. If he wants you to stay there, it's a different question. But you're there. <clears throat> and not only that, every moment you meet new people. And people come, they need things. They need a screwdriver, needs a this, right? And you can say a good word. You can say a pleasant word to a person. You can make an encouraging word. You can say a little word of Torah. And besides the fact that you meet new people, even just to say, good morning. How are you, my friend? It can change a whole person's life. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I, you know, I didn't think about that. In other words, that's what it means. You try to find in every moment an opportunity 
to make a little bit of good in the world. The world is always brand new. He says, this is also implied <clears throat> by the sentence which talks about Rosh Hashanah, Tiku, be strong, Bechodesh, to feel the novelty, the newness of every moment in life. Tiku Bechodesh. Okay, what this means, let's get back though to our topic, is on Rosh Hashanah, and that we're going to do, God willing, tomorrow.